Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 153 of the Knife Junkie podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Coming up today, we've got a Rough Rider show. Bob's got a couple of more Rough Riders that came in, and I've got three to talk about. We're also going to be covering Knife Life news and more on this episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello again, Knife Junkies, and welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. As I said in the opening, number 153. Man, we're on our way to 200 and beyond here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. That's right. Let's round up. That's right. That's right. Uh, a lot of uh, great stuff to talk about, as I uh, teased in the intro there, a uh, uh, seemingly like a rough writer show. You've got uh, two more that you want to talk about, and I got three. That's in yeah. addition to uh, last week's Rough Rider haul that you showed off, man. What's going on here? Yeah, I don't know. I was really excited to see that you, on your own, went out and uh, decided to get three Rough Riders. I thought that was cool, because uh, when I was showing them off last week, you're like... Uh, these are up my alley. These are in my price that's range. Right. And uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, the, the value of these knives as as I've mentioned, not only are they really excellent in terms of their build and all that uh, and design, but it's allowed me to kind of get my current uh, uh, slip joint um, fixation kind of cycled through quickly. You know, I, I was able to, for, for the price of basically one GEC, get a whole bunch of rough riders and it's kind of taken care of that, uh, that urge, that impulse, you know, yeah. uh, collectors can tend to be impulsive sometimes. And, uh, oh. so yes, <laughs> as a matter of fact, so I have like, uh, like six new slip joint knives for, you know, for relatively inexpensive, uh, price. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not looking around now and that's settled. And now I can get back to, um, <laughs> selling off other knives and getting, right. getting and deeper. Yeah. Well, I, I took your advice from uh, the last uh, podcast where we were talking about the price of Rough Riders. And you were, you know, I was like, you know, I could buy a whole lot of knives with that. And, and your yeah. point was, well, you can also try out something that you might not be initially drawn to. Because yeah. when I when I went to the Smoky Mountain Knife Works website to buy some, I was immediately drawn to the, you know, the canoe style knife, you know, <laughs> that little, yeah, that yes, little small yes. knife. And I was like, I want to buy every one of them. Then I was like, I heard Bob <laughs> in the back of my head saying, you know, they're so expensive. Try something new. So I, I, I tried to venture out a little bit, but we'll we'll yeah. talk about that a little bit later coming up. So awesome. as we show and, up. And we'll also be telling you, we're not just talking Rough Rider, we're also talking Great Eastern Cutlery. I mean, I'm, I'm not yeah. completely out of my traditional or slip joint phase here. Uh, and I, I I got a new GEC uh, off the secondary market this week that is oh, mm, mm, beautiful, yeah. but I'll show it to you later. Yeah. And uh, probably not in my wheelhouse. It's not one of the, it's not a little tiny knife either. <laughs> no. It's a gigantor. That's right. So we'll see that. But uh, as we teased in the opening, a lot of great stuff coming up. Uh, uh, The state of the collection, obviously, we're going to talk a couple of stories in Knife Life news. But uh, opening of the show, we cover some miscellaneous this and that kind of stuff. And uh, definitely we uh, try to use it as an opportunity to thank our patrons uh, on the Knife Junkies Patreon. And uh, a new patron has joined us this month, Bob. That's right. Uh, Tyrone, I just want to give a shout out to Tyrone. Thank you so much for uh, for signing up and joining us and helping uh, support the Knife Junkie podcast. It's greatly appreciated. So here is your shout out, sir. T-Ra-L-1. That's what he goes by. So it's, Say that it's again. Great to, <laughs> T-Ra-L-1. And it's great okay. to have him. So thank okay. you, sir. All right. All right. Well, the, Almost, uh, the not- speaking of Patreon, I'm sorry, Jim, to interrupt right. you, but yeah. uh, something I lecture my girls about all the time. But uh, since we're talking about Patreon, I just want to mention the idea that was born out of the last Thursday Night Knives to have going to the- talk about that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jump the gun. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we're going to be having the next knife sale that I do when I'm going to be. Um, you know, I'm doing some further curating and 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 cultivating of the collection. And as I decide to to um, 
to move some knives along so that I can acquire new ones. The next sale will be on Patreon. And uh, that was a, a suggestion I think Ryan, uh, Spirited Blades brought up, I think. Uh, but a lot of people concurred in the comments. A lot, of, uh, a lot of viewers were excited about that idea. So we're gonna do that next time. I think it was actually brought up by someone in the comments about doing a, oh, uh, okay. a, a knife sale. Uh, for for patrons and then several other folks commented and you know it was I, I saw that too and I was kind of like well that would be kind of interesting but how do you how do you do that I mean is it uh, patrons get in other words the exclusive access or the early access to, to the knives if they want to purchase them so yeah yeah I think it'd be great that I mean that's yeah. what we would do make a video put it up there for for the patrons and and uh, I know a lot of other people do that but now that now that we have oh, a, okay. a, a little head of steam a little bit of uh, an audience there. Um, it's a good place to do it. And plus it's another way to, to say thank you. So yeah, <laughs> early access to the knives I'm selling. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, one of the uh, new perks uh, coming for the Knife Junkies Patreon group. But of course, a, uh, a current perk, if you are at the uh, $10 a month subscription level for the Knife Junkies podcast is uh, be entered into the uh, knife drawing giveaway every month. It's a monthly knife drawing giveaway. And our next one is uh, next Thursday, October 15th. So uh, still plenty of time for you to get in at the $10 a month level and um, try to be Beat out Caleb, uh, who has, uh, <laughs> yeah. has some wonderful luck. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. Should I go grab the knife real quick? It's a foot away from me and show it off what we're going to be uh, giving away. I would love for you to do that. Give All me right. a sec. All right. Well, Bob uh, goes and gets that knife we're going to give away. I do want to uh, say that you can join the uh, Knife Junkies uh, Patreon group. If we just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's where you'll find all the details about the Knife Junkies uh, Patreon group and how you can become a patron at uh, any of the uh, three different levels. Whoa, Bob, calm down. What are you <laughs> so we will be giving away this absolutely fantastic and ridiculous Topps Knife uh, uh, push dagger. It's called the Eye Stick, which I think is funny because to me it's kind of a, it's kind of a play on... Um, the i everything iphone ipad all that but it's also a um you know i stick it's kind of funny yeah you can stick you can stick something with this so this is a uh, a, a, a hefty giant beautiful push dagger called the i stick from tops knives comes in a really cool sheath and it was donated by our good friend Stu uh up in vermont stone and steel and uh it comes in this plastic bag now tops knives have always kind of come in these tactical plastic bags until recently. I think they started, uh, they've started with the boxes. Um, but, uh, so you'll be getting that if you, uh, if you win the Patreon giveaway, it's, it's a really okay. cool knife. It'd be awesome yeah. to have in, in your collection. Okay. Well, again, that's Thursday, October 15th. We do the uh, monthly knife drawing, uh, the third Thursday of every month on Thursday night knives. That's the uh, knife junkies live video show that you can see on YouTube, the knife junkie.com slash YouTube, as well as the knife junkies, Facebook group at the knife junkie.com slash Facebook, Facebook, uh, just a, a great opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, hear the Knife Junkie uh, go on about stuff, knives, show off stuff, but also uh, have you come on and join the show and uh, yeah. show off some of your knives, talk about that, get into a discussion, ask questions, comments, and uh, just be part of the Knife Junkies uh, community and, and, and meet and, and talk with other folks, Bob. That's one of the, the really great things about the show. Yeah, that show uh, gives me energy. It literally gives me energy. And uh, I don't often use the word literal uh, or literally, <laughs> but, you know, it comes at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, right. on a work day, you know, and right. at, at that point, I've had a full day of work. I've come home. I've cooked dinner. I've like hung out with the kids and and the family. And uh, and then by the time 10 o'clock or nine o'clock rolls around, I'm like, oh, gosh, the show's coming. I'm tired, man. I'm beat. And then maybe I'll play a, a little bass or listen to some music or whatever I do. And it gets me, gets me, you know, up enough. And then, and then you and I get on there and I see the graphic and then it turns on. It's like, yes, I love that show. I love Thursday night knives. People, uh, uh, people seem to like it too. So, um, check it out. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, come on the show. I I'd love to meet you. 
Yeah. And uh, there's not, you know, you come on for a few minutes and dip out. You don't have to feel obligated to be on and for right. a long time or anything like that. Right. Well, if you want to go to the uh, knifejunkie.com slash Thursday, the knifejunkie.com slash Thursday, we've got a uh, archived uh, uh, replay section. So in case you missed any of the shows or are new to the Knife Junkies channel and you want to see what we're talking about, about Thursday Night Knives, uh, you can check uh, some of the past episodes out there and uh, then see how great it is. And uh, there's actually an Eventbrite uh, um little system right there on Thursday night uh, knives uh, webpage, the knife junkie.com slash Thursday. Uh, I know a lot of folks come in and say, Oh, I, I missed it again. You know, I'm sorry. I'm late. Well, go to the knife, the knife slash Thursday. You can sign up for the event bright uh, uh, thing subscription, which is free. But the nice thing about that is it uh, gives you like a notification. So you don't miss a show. So yeah. sign up for that. Yeah. All right. Um, Great interview that you had this past Sunday with Curtis Iovito with Spartan Blades and uh, got a little uh, something special, too, you yeah. want to show off. <clears throat> I do. Um, afterward, uh, he said, uh, you know, I was talking about how much I adore my my Spartan Harzy folder, which is SHF, which also sounds like, you know, shit hits the fan. It's kind of like the knife you want when that happens. Right. Um, he says put it in a box and send it to me and send me a graphic, uh, a file of your logo. And I did and check it out. He, uh, he had this engraved in my handle, the knife junkie. How cool is that? What a class act. I mean, <laughs> and then also on the, on the spacer, sorry. I, I don't have my cameraman here. My usual cameraman is not here. Um, so I'm, but thank you, Curtis. I, I'm sure he's not watching or listening, but if uh, if indeed he is, thank you so much. What a what a great and uh, what a nice gift. What a nice thing to do for me. So I very much appreciate that. And what a cool interview, man. I really appreciated his time. And uh, but just hearing about uh, his whole um, just the whole Spartan story, working with Bill Harzi right. and all that. What a great guy. Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, right after that interview we did uh, with him, uh, it was kind of. Um, you know, special or, or meaningful to me since uh, I was born and raised and grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, you know, the home of Fort Bragg mm -hmm. and Pope Air Force Base. And uh, he and his uh, co-founder, of course, uh, uh, were in the military uh, and, and special form and, and began their shop uh, in, I believe, Aberdeen, which is uh, not too far from Pope and Fort Bragg and now uh, are in um, Southern Pines, I believe, or Spring Lakes, one or the other, but all still right around the Fort Bragg Pope Air Force Base. So, uh, yeah, it was just kind of neat being a, a Tar Heel boy. Yeah, close to your heart, close to your heart. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think that means only one thing, Jim. Uh, and and I, I think that is one of their knives, right? <laughs> hey, hey, let's let's go right into life uh, knife life news because this knife that this sh they just came out with, Jim, is so for you. Can we bring it up? It's the new Spartan Harzy three point two five. Well, let's go into Knife Life News. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I have all these wonderful little graphics, Bob, and you won't let me use them. Oh, that was a <laughs> dude, that was a toss to your graphic. I thought we were okay. <laughs> all right, um, let's do it. So I was just waxing poetic uh, and lovey-dovey about my Spartan Harzy folder. Uh, it is a four-inch bladed knife and uh, might be too large for some people. And, uh, well, not might, it was. And they got a lot of feedback. I love that knife. I love the design. I love everything about it. I love Spartan. I love Harzy. The folder's just too big. They listened. And being a, a, you know, a great company and a nimble company who cares about their customers. They came out with a 3.25 ver uh, inch version of this knife. Now, this is not that knife. This is the four inch version. Uh, but 3.25 is the is the size, is the EDC size, I feel like. Uh, so many, so many great, great um, EDC knives are in that in that uh, category, that length, 3.125. Because 3.25, I'm sorry, three and a quarter, because it's a little bit bigger than three and a little bit smaller than three and a half. And uh, we know that three and a half is a big folder and three is a small folder. So it's the perfect size, Jim. I think you need to get this. It's the same thing. Titanium body, S35VN, uh, 
uh, blade steel. But if you look at it, they didn't just uh, shrink it down. They didn't just put it in CAD and say, let's uh, uh, decrease it by whatever percentage. And my father probably knows exactly what that percentage is. Uh, but uh, let's redesign it so that it fits a hand. Um, you know, because if you take if you take something that's this big, five inch handle and shrink it down into a four inch handle or so and, and keep everything, all the ratios the same, it's not gonna fit your hand right. So when you shrink down a design, you have to redesign the handle. Um, and they did a beautiful job of it, it looks like. And and if you look at the horn, like or the, the sort of butt end of it, they rounded it out uh, and made it a little bit different from, from the, here, let me put this piece of paper in there. See how it's kind of squared off right, right at the, uh, right near the clip. So they rounded that out, uh, which makes sense for a smaller handle. It's gonna nestle into your, uh, closer to your digits that way and closer to the edge of your hand that way. And uh, just having it rounded out just will make, so in other words, all, all I'm trying to say is they took special consideration for the ergonomics of this knife. They didn't just shrink it down by a percentage. And I think that's great. Uh, other companies do that, you know, and uh, like Spyderco does that. And, um, you know, other companies do that. It's not the first time, but I, I, I like seeing that because, I feel right. like I've been burned before. I picked up a smaller version of a knife mm -hmm. and I'm like, what, why Why are these things pointing in my fingers? They're not giant sausage fingers. And and I realized, oh, they just shrunk the handle. Okay. Well, that would, um, you know, not knowing how to make a knife or not really knowing mathematics, geometry, those type of things. My first assumption is you've got something that's big, this big, just kind of shrink it overall, everything down, and make it this big, and it would work. But that's that's a great point that you that you bring your, up. Your, and I'll, your fingers don't shrink along with the design. That's true. That's true. And also like your uh, your point about the uh, the rounded edge mm -hmm. over there, because that was that, that was really uh, a great visual. Once you showed your knife, yeah, yeah. You see that, yeah. <laughs> And then we go back and see, see the picture there. So yeah, good, good point about that. So interesting. Yeah. All right. What's uh, what's next up in Knife Life News, Bob? Uh, so Jonathan McNeese, uh, custom knife maker. Um, you know him perhaps for his uh, his uh, what is it called? The McBee, the McBee from uh, uh, Spider Co. My gosh. I'm sorry, I, I just had a little brain freeze there. But uh, the McBee, it's this little tiny sub two inch Warncliffe um, that was a, a big hit with Spyderco. And uh, his knives are much sought after and quite expensive. And like other savvy makers out there, he is uh, he's going and expanding his production by dipping his feet into the mid-tech realm. So his new line of knives is called Performance Machined Line. And uh, so these are knives that are um, parts are, are cut out elsewhere and it comes to him. He does all the finishing work. And uh, so basically he's still got a lot of hands on the knife uh, on the knives that he's going to be releasing. Um, but they're going to be for a lot less money. It's the mid tech model. I don't know why I'm spending all this time explaining it. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's it's a cool uh, bit of news because he's got a, a variety of knives and people who have not been able to get into his knives uh, in terms of money can now buy them. Uh, so he's got he's got uh, this one up here on on knife news that just knocks me out. I love the look of that thing. It's a little uh, two finger. Um, two finger styled ring, uh, hawk build, carambity, neck knifey kind of thing. I mean, to me, Jim, that lives, that should live behind my, my work ID. It looks small, discreet, it's double edged, chiseled ground. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all business, like bad business, but then he has a bunch of other designs too. I mean, he's got this Mac two, which is a, uh, a, a really refined looking folder. It's a clip point which, you know, I love clip points. It's got a very broad blade with a saber grind and uh, a very neutral, good looking handle, uh, a, a three and a quarter inch blade. They're going to come out with a three and a half inch uh, bladed version of that. And uh, I just think it's great. I love it. I love it when uh, designers do this. They make their stuff more available, but it's not just a collaboration with uh, Spyderco, for instance. And I'm not saying I'm not 
belittling that. That's awesome. But he's taking the reins more and doing it himself and uh, making it his own effort. The McNeese Custom Knives uh, Performance Machine Line. How cool is that? Look at that. That big, broad, clip blade. And if you're listening, just take my word for it. It is broad. <laughs> I don't know, Jim. What do you think? <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You caught me right at the time I had to cough. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah, I like the look of that knife. Uh, going back, back to the um, what was the first one we we brought up uh, that you said could fit behind your um, your oh, badge, yeah. kind of a neck knife. Seems like it might be a little too big to to fit behind there. Maybe I'm I, I didn't read the measurements, perhaps. Oh well, just looking at the at the finger holes, uh, it, it looks like it it's probably discreet enough. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit of the uh, Bastinelli Diagnostic, except, um, you know, it's different, obviously, but uh, but the, it looks like it's in that same sort of uh, that same sort of size. I was surprised to see that design because up until now, being totally honest, uh, I'm not familiar with his knives. And up until now, I was really only um, familiar with the McBee, which is such a tiny little stylish, you know, Spyderco folder. And then when I saw this and the other, uh, the Mac 2, I was uh, surprised to see how varied his designs are. I was thinking, oh, th this is a guy who makes these, uh, that, that little McBee is based on a custom knife he makes called the Killer Bee. And it's just this tiny little Warncliffe. And then to see this, this beastly little double-edged thing and, and then that, uh, that nice big clip point folder, it was uh, just kind of interesting to see the range of designs he's, uh, putting out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well that's uh, what we try to do here on uh, knife life news each week on the uh, midweek supplemental podcast is uh, uh, give you a chance to uh, see some of the the new product drops and learn about what's going on in the knife world and of course our uh, thanks to uh, knife news for letting us uh, share their stories and often uh, share their pictures and that type of thing as we uh, we bring those stories to you and uh, you know if you have any uh, thoughts or comments or anything about any of those uh, knives or stories in the news we would love to uh, hear from you call the listener line at 724-466-4487 724-466-4487 or uh, email bob at bob at the knife and uh, i could tell you had another little comment or something you wanted to add, Bob? I, I just, you were talking about knife news and I just have to, I say this every once in a while, Benjamin Schwartz, the, 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 uh, the guy over there and he writes all the articles. His writing is so good. He's funny, man. He's funny too. I mean, you know, he can, he can write for a full page about a knife and, uh, and do it with panache and, uh, and you leave knowing everything you need to know about it, but he's done it in an entertaining and interesting way. He's funny. I like him. Yeah. Well, you know, probably a lot of people could, could write, a, a page or more about knives. Oh, manage. I walked right into that. Oh, God. But not, okay. Not with, Newsletter's not coming. With the, not with the panache. Oh, I, I wasn't even going <laughs> to think about newsletter, but you mentioned oh. it. You brought it up. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh my God! My own guilt just impugned yeah. me right here. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All if right. you're a uh, if you're a regular listener of the Knife Junkie podcast and a subscriber to the Knife Junkies newsletter, you've probably wondered, "Gosh, you guys have had some technical difficulty with your email delivery <laughs> platform." I think we just learned what the uh, the difficulty was. <laughs> no, but mm. uh, teasing Bob. He has been busy. I, I did want to compliment you, and I forgot we should have uh, uh, had a graphic or thrown something up on the screen. Green, uh, your most recent article for uh, uh, oh, in, yeah. uh, Knives Illustrated. Knives Illustrated, yeah. Oh man, I I really like uh, I really like writing those articles uh, for Knives Illustrated. Um, I've done three so far. Uh, this last mm -hmm. one is on uh, Emerson Emerson Knives and uh, and kind of the history of the company and the history of Ernest Emerson. And uh, I'm so grateful for uh, Brian Slicey Dicey on YouTube. Uh, for inviting me to to write uh, on for that magazine because uh, well each each time I've written three three times I've had a great experience because it's not just sitting down and writing it's going out and doing something and then or or, or doing research or or bringing together uh, you know a bunch of different facts and and then going out testing them out and then taking pictures and the whole the whole nine yards right. uh, writing things up kind of refining your thoughts on it. Uh, so anyway, I don't mean to go on and bloviate here. You can go read my bloviations over at uh, Knives Illustrated. 
Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations, kudos for that. We certainly do uh, appreciate uh, being able to rub elbows now with a uh, podcaster, videographer, author, writer. We thank you, Mr. Knife Chunky. Oh, oh me. I thought you were talking about Slacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, one thing uh, yeah, before we leave Knife Life News, there was uh, another little story you wanted to cover. Uh, uh, and you mentioned yeah. Emerson Knives, something about uh, Emerson Knives, uh, something going on there. Yes, uh, I I was on Instagram and uh, he put up a uh, a cool picture of uh, of him holding up a blank for the new Bull Shark, his automatic knife, and uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then you see all the cutouts behind, you know, where they uh, where they cut out all the all the blanks and stuff, and then you can see the handles in the back or the liners. And but then you read it, and uh, he's really hacked in this post uh, because people have been saying. Uh, Kershaw is manufacturing this because when you look at it, it has many of the design cues um, from his uh, automatic uh, that he did with them as a collaboration. It was the Launch 5, the clip point, very cool clip point automatic knife. And, uh, you know, it's got it's got a similar button, the concentric uh, circles with the red. Uh, but people were saying that it was manufactured by Kershaw. As a matter of fact, on uh, Thursday night knives. People, some people in the comment uh, surmised that in the comments, and and I was like, oh yeah, I, I see the similarity there, and uh, you know, with the aluminum and the and that uh, button, and even if it were the case that he was having them manufactured by Kershaw, which it isn't, this, this guy's been doing this for forty years. He's got his own manufacturing facility. He's got all the know how of forty years. He doesn't need to farm out his work. Um, but even if he were, uh, and it wasn't a, a Kershaw labeled collaboration, I, to me, I would have no no issue with that whatsoever. Um, because to me, that's what the that's the water we're swimming in these days. We have collaborations all over the place, people doing work for other people, and I think uh, to me it would have been totally acceptable. But but when I saw this, I was like, oh man, I I I I could see how. Someone in his position, someone who's busted his his behind for forty years to be where he is, and then and then people kind of go off at, at the at the mouth or loose loose talk and and suggest that Kershaw's making it. And I have to admit, I was part of that uh, mm. loose talk the other night. Uh, I could see how that would really stick in your craw. Uh, I, yeah. I hope that uh, nothing I said the other night would uh, not that he watches our show, but you know, I I wouldn't want the impression to be taken that that uh that i would was dissing in any way i mean like I, if someone came back and said yeah Chris, i made it i'd be like awesome can't wait to get one so right. uh but yeah. that being said i can't wait to get one anyway <laughs> one of these <laughs> um but i also look forward to i have a feeling uh he's going to be going bigger and he's going to be making more i mean I, I i think that this is a proof of concept knife and uh, he made it a California legal uh, because obviously that that makes it the most acceptable around this country and the most uh, accessible, you know, to, to people in different jurisdictions. But especially in his home state of California, maybe he wants to carry the knife he's making. Uh, but, you know, knowing Emerson knives and their and their usual four inch size or so, uh, I can't wait to see what he does when he goes uh, larger with them presuming he does. But in any case, I just wanted to, I just wanted to mention that because when I saw that, I, when I saw that post on Instagram, I scrolled by it and I, I, I kept feeling a little pang. I was like, ah, I was a part of one of those conversations. Right. Uh, I'm sure the conversation is broad and wide, but you know, I just felt like uh, I wanted to say something about it because um, you know, it, it was not anything to impugn. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. And and I have a feeling he's not referring to us, but we were part of that conversation. So I thought it was something right. to bring up. Right. Uh, but anyway, well, check it I, out. Uh, it does I, look like a bull shark, by the way. Yeah. Well, I, I felt uh, I kind of highlighted some of the Instagram posts there, some of the wording. But, uh, you know, he uh, was 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 kind of passionate and saying, I'm going to look <laughs> off screen here, you know, if uh, something about, you know, he marketing department pleaded with him not to make this post but uh you know uh, you know oh, yeah. he's owned the Emerson knife company for years like you said and for 
if you were one, one of the ones who doubted my word or thought that I was deceiving you, I do not want you to buy another Emerson knife again, ever. Mm. So, you yes, know, yes, I forgot very, to very, that. very passionate. And I can understand right. very passionate about his company and his knives yeah. and, and what yeah. they are turning out. Yeah. Now, now uh, I forgot about that. The, the, the whole deception thing, like it, it wouldn't have even occurred to me to see that as an issue of de he's deceiving me, you know, like, I, mm -hmm. uh, well, in in my case, I was just looking at the button thinking, yeah, it looks like the same button on the launch, but he mm -hmm. designed the damn knife. So, of course, you know, it doesn't it's not uh, it, yeah. it, it's not outside the realm. But uh, in any way, in, in any case, uh, I, no one can tell me what to do with my money. And I'm, I will continue to buy Emerson knives. Right. And uh, uh, but uh, Ernie Emerson, we love you no and uh, value your work. Yeah, have no doubt that you'll buy many, many, many more Emersons <laughs> as much as you love them and couldn't wait to uh, to talk to him on uh, one of our earlier podcasts. Uh, oh, yeah. Just go to thenifejunkie.com or just uh, use your favorite search engine, uh, knifejunkie.com, or just search the Knife Junkie podcast, Ernest Emerson, and you'll find almost a uh, two-hour episode with uh, Mr. Emerson. And I uh, certainly do thank him for uh, for his time doing that. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Bob, uh, our favorite time. I know your favorite time, at least perhaps, <laughs> on uh, the midweek supplemental. That's uh, state of the collection time where you get to uh, show off knives and uh, talk about some of the, the new knives in uh, your collection. But uh, this week, also state of the collection for Jim. That's right. I've got a few knives. <laughs> well, let's start with you, Jim. So you got, yeah. um, you've got you gotten a few new things, and I want you to go wide on yourself. I, I'm directing oh, now God. since you're talking about it. Do I have to? So I want, you, I want you to go wide on yourself. I want you to hold everything up to the camera. Tell us what you got. Okay. Well, I'm going to first talk about the uh, Rough Rider Knives Blue Streak Frame Lock. And I, before I take you off screen, and if you're listening to this uh, on our podcast, uh, you won't be able to see everything, but uh, you can try to visualize it. Uh, Bob, this is one I bought, um, well, for two reasons. It was only $6.99. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just incredible to me. But uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I uh, I bought it because, as you had mentioned last week, Rough Riders are such an inexpensive price point. Buy some things that you don't think you like or that you, know, you haven't ever carried. Give it a try. See what you like. So this is one that I bought for that, that very reason. Ooh, and it's and, and it's blue. And it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's blue. All right. So let me uh, let me pull the, the package out here. First of all, a uh, little Rough Rider box that came in, which was okay. which was, uh, came inside the box uh, in a little plastic baggie, if you will. And the only reason I mention that is because um, the next couple of knives, I'll I'll show you the difference and uh, what I'm talking about there. So. As you can see, appropriately named Blue Streak. Everybody knows I have a thing for blue. Now, I'll be honest, this was not a... I was looking... At, I was, it was between this one and another one that I was looking at when I bought it. And um, this one was it, was... it was not my favorite. Uh, I'll just put it that way. I, I wanted to get the other blue knife... But I thought, you know, I'm listening to Bob. This is probably not a knife I would have bought for myself or, you know, be that terribly interested in. But again, for $6.99, I, I couldn't pass it up. I, I just had to give it a try. So, okay, uh, I want you to use the flipper to open it. Because we oh, need God. to find out about the action. Is it assisted or is it on washers? How, how does it flip? How, how? Well, I don't have any idea what it's on. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, okay. Did it did it feel like when you pressed the uh, flipper at a, at a certain point, uh, something else took over? A magical power that that threw it open. Uh, it did. It did open very easily. Yes. Okay. So I think it's probably spring assisted. Uh, okay. We can we can of course look that up. Uh, spring assisted. You've got a, a, a steel frame lock there, and and a sort of 
sl uh, slightly beg reminiscent blade with the holes. That's all I'm getting at. And the fuller. That's pretty cool. I like that fuller, man. And the fuller is? Uh, I, that That is the groove in the blade. Uh, you see the groove in the blade there? Flip it over on the other side. <laughs> Let me look at it. <laughs> see you see that uh, that channel milled into oh, the yeah. blade there with yeah, the holes in it? Yeah. 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 That's the fuller. It, it, it only appears to be on the show side, though, the side that's facing you. Uh, there's like a groove cut out. Um, that is uh, that's kind of a signature of Todd Begg knives. Okay. And uh, 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 I love the groove part of it, and I hate the holes part of it. Same thing in the in the Begg knives. Mm. Not that I have mm. one to hate, <laughs> but right, in the right. in the design, I always think like stuff's gonna get in there, and you have to like take a toothpick and. But right. That that would be if I used my knives for anything. So no, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I didn't want to spend much time on that, but I did want to show it off because, like I said, seven bucks. I mean. Good yeah. lord! <laughs> so, so I'm interested in the blue mule. Well, funny you should mention that. That one is next, Excellent. and it it came in the blue mule box. But this one was actually came in the box wrapped in this oh. branded like craft wrapping paper. Yeah, that's which, that's a, a very traditional touch. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, not a, um, you know, not an expensive um, item that you have to do uh, to, to package your stuff, but it was, um, I just thought a, a, you know, a classy touch, especially yes. uh, pull you back on here for a $9.99 knife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just to have, you know, little box, uh, a branded box, oh, wrong box, uh, the blue mule box, uh, the craft paper, and then, of course, my favorite blue knife. I love the canoe. I do too. The, the, the pattern. Yeah, we'll bring it back on here. Uh oh, you're going to show Sorry. off something of yours. That's well, right. no, 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 no. I'm getting something that I'm going to. Oh, so can you open up both blades and, and show it that way? I probably can, but I'll be honest. It is very stiff and very, oh. um, very tight. Okay. Um, I, cause I haven't, I haven't opened it, uh, uh since I got it. So just, um, just one blade is fine. One blade is fine. Yeah. But so that's the pull how hard it is to pull out. It's very hard to pull out. Yeah. Yeah. So and on I, a rating from one to 10, 10 being breaking your, your thumbnail, what, what would you, and one being like no spring at all, what would you call that? Um, well, I, I, I've always had trouble opening things with my thumbnails. Uh, so I'll, I'll be honest, I'm struggling getting the second little blade open with my okay. thumbnail. And, and the first one was very tight. Uh, so I would give it a, nine close to a 10. Wow. Being, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's all right. So you should look for it. They have these little things that, that, that you can help pry your knives open with, you know, because hmm. it, it won't always be that stiff. It will eventually right, uh, right. over time, you know, but I mean, it'll always have a hard pull. It's not like it's going to break in like a, like a, like a, um, like a modern knife will, but it will be, God, that's beautiful. That's G10 there, that blue G10. Yeah, nice. yeah I liked it. Saw it and immediately I was like, well, I got to put that one in the cart. Nice. And I got I got three knives, two of which you've seen. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first one we talked about was, uh, what, $6.99, $6.99. That one was uh, $9.99. And uh, the next one that we're going to talk about is um, the... Um, um, brown stag bone uh, trapper uh, oh, yeah. that I got, and I I really broke the bank on this one, Bob. Fourteen dollars yeah. ninety nine cents. Dude, I know. I hope you didn't what tell. I, I didn't. I hope you didn't. No, tell I didn't tell the wife. And uh, I actually I um I brought the package in very quickly so that she didn't see that I got them. But yeah. uh, I, I definitely am going to go wide on this because I I got to show you. Fifteen dollars, and I opened up the 
the UPS, USPS priority mail um, shipping envelope. And I felt something kind of big, and then there was a couple of loose things or small things roaming around, and and those were the um, the blue mule and the the other one. But then I opened up the bag, and I saw this this box, just incredible packaging, and I never can figure out how to open it. It's got this little side here, magnetic. And you open it magnetic yeah which is which is awesome and i'm trying to do this <laughs> open it up you see the rough rider packaging and then the the knife in the box in this hard stiff cardboard uh, not cardboard um foam. foam type material i mean you know the the packaging alone yeah uh, just just really blew me away for like I said for for 15 bucks let me get the uh, knife out of here <laughs> yeah while you're doing that i have one in the same series this little mini cotton sampler that i got i think that's the same thing oh sorry <laughs> you know, hey <laughs> hey there you are put your put yours back up again I oh no i guess i guess slightly different uh different series but they do a nice you know so so like mine is supposed to look like stag uh you know the horn of a stag or the antler but uh that's expensive so this is cow shin bone that's been sculpted and burned to look like stag and yeah. look at yours wow go wide on you let's see yeah, that. The, the the stag bone trapper and again, you know, this was a, a style of knife that, uh, you know, had not bought, obviously, or had any of. Yeah. So the Trapper is the number one selling model of, uh, of case knives. They sell Trappers uh, more than anything, uh, apparently. And uh, it is, they are incredibly useful. You have two full-size blades there. You have a clip point blade and a spay blade. And yes, spay refers to castrating animals. It's a blade uh, that is very, very sharp, long, and then, but has a sort of blunted tip. So you don't cut anything you don't intend to cut. And when you're doing that job, you want to make sure you're not cutting what you don't want to cut. Right. Uh, beautiful. And you got the double pulls there, which to me, design wise, I've never cared for, but they do that on their more premium um, uh, uh, productions there. So you see mm -hmm. the pull, the nail nick down towards the bottom and then the uh, down towards the tip of the blade. And then along the flat spine part of the blade, there's a long pull. So mm -hmm. nail nick and a long pull on the same blade. A little busy to me, but, you know, yeah. not a deal breaker. Well, like I said, you know, um, last week when you were talking, you know, about buying some knives that you don't think you you may like or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this style the uh, i think you, the trapper as you call it mm -hmm. you know um a little longer i mean and it's it's tight where did i do it there it is it's in my canoe <laughs> <laughs> um you know a little longer than my canoe type knife that i that i like to mm -hmm. carry and style of, of blade or whatever. But you know, the, the stag handle, you know, had to get it's, it for 15 bucks. I, I, love I mean, it's, it, so I, I gotta say, it's just nice to look at. I love the bone handles and uh, uh, you know, so congratulations on that haul, man. That's, that's pretty nice. Yeah. That's a, that's and a again, pretty nice. I, you know, I was just impressed, blown away for $15 that it came in, you know, yeah. a nice box and packaging and given your tip of the week last week, definitely keeping the boxes, keeping yeah. all the packing material, keeping everything like that. Not yeah. That keep I'm all the goodies that, yeah. But yeah. Just in case. So you're talking about packaging. This is a great segue into the knife I'm going to talk about because you're talking about that beautiful box. I just got mm -hmm. a, uh, a traditional this past week on the secondary market from a great guy on, uh, on blade forums, as usual, I, I, I go there a lot. Um, even though, even <laughs> that that shows my age, I guess. But uh, so, look at this. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery Number no. Ninety Seven in Tidiut trim. That's there. They have a 
three different lines that Great Eastern Cutlery makes. And, and they're basically tiers. There's the farm and tool. Um, and those are, are, are like the sod buster and the, the very can, um, canvas handle uh, knives that are less expensive. And then they have the um, uh, North, uh, the Great Eastern Cutlery, and then they have Tidiute. And Tidiute is their, their higher end trim. Anyway, this is the number 97 Allegheny knife and it's a Coke bottle hunter. That's what this is. That's a Coke bottle hunter. And if you see it's shaped, <laughs> you know, kind of like a Coke bottle. If you're old enough to remember what a Coke bottle looks like, let's see, there we go. Sorry for, for the camera work here, but anyway, uh, no. this, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to pop in, you know, uh, I didn't, I didn't get it until about the third or fourth time you said Coke bottle. And I oh. finally saw the shape and I finally, I, I yeah. finally realized, I was like, yeah, that does kind of look like a Coke bottle. So I just wanted to pop in and say that. Oh, cool. Well, I, I was, uh, I was watching a video on this style of knife uh, by a, a guy on YouTube, Tobias. I can't remember his full name, and but I'll mention him next time because he does a lot of uh, traditional knife reviews, and uh, he's got a you know he's a wealth of knowledge, and he's talking about the shape of this and how that uh, there's that hump kind of on the back. See how it comes up, the swell on the back. That's to accommodate the spring. The spring around the pin has to be wider, fatter to, to not, you know, to accommodate the pin. And when you do that on a, on a flat back knife, that extra bit of material for the spring is coming up into the well where the blade rests, which doesn't allow you to have, which, which uh, makes you, uh, forces you into a more narrow blade design. But if you put that hump, that extra material for the spring around the pin on the back of the knife and have it flat, on the inside of the knife, then you can have a much wider, broader blade. And that's what you get in this Allegheny. Uh, if you look at it, it almost has a recurve or not almost, it does have a recurve, but I, I think it's not there for the, I think it's there so that you sharpen through it over the years and it will become straight. I don't, it doesn't feel like it's intentionally there for, for cutting power, but I could be totally wrong. It's got that beautiful long pull and uh, machine ground swedge there. It's got an, an etch that will be gone shortly. I, I, I want this to patina. So last night I, I started eating apples with it. That's, that's my preferred method. I know people might think that that's cheap, but food I think is the, the best way. Meat and, mm. and, and fruit to uh, patina 1095 blade. Uh, but handle material, this is my favorite from Great Eastern Cutlery. It's that autumn jig bone. It's just so beautiful. I have a number of knives now from them, four knives in that uh, in that handle material. And it's got a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, you know, that brown. It's just gorgeous. And the jigging. Uh, and you were mentioning, um, you were talking about the box from that Rough Rider. And they send them in tubes. Great Eastern Cutlery has tubes and with really cool art on them. And they're very old, old timey. God, the lights brighten here. They're really old timey. And then when you pop it, oh, this has been opened many times. I just pulled apart. So when you take the top off, first of all, they always put what it is, autumn gold jig bone. And then 97 is the model. One is the blade style, what they have uh, the clip point as their number one blade. Uh, one, the next one is one blade in the handle. And then the 19 is the year of manufacture cool little bit of knowledge to, to have on your knife. And then when you look in there, you got paper too, Jim, you got that wax paper and it's just such an, and there was a button with this one. Sometimes uh, I think with the pattern production pattern premieres, they, uh, they send buttons, but you get it rolled up in this nice old wax paper. And it just is a cool experience. You get this, you open it up. How many times have I said cool uh, in this podcast? I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to start saying out outstandingly excellent you open these things up you get this heavy little little bit yeah. of paper you have the experience of unwrapping it and unfolding it and then this beautiful knife comes out i love that i prefer that to the to say the foam or to the plastic bag which most people send it in a box in a plastic bag ultimately that's all i really am interested in is the knife uh but you see this and and you just think they went the extra mile well, and it, it doesn't take much to 
to give that extra little experience because I always remember the phrase perception is reality. Mm -hmm. So if the first thing you get is a knife in a plastic bag, you're like, uh, but <laughs> if you get a, if you get a package like this, you know, 15, $15 knife, or even in a small box that has, like you said, the wax paper, the, the craft paper, the branded paper, it's, it's in a nice presentation. You're already more excited about that knife, regardless of what price you paid for it, $15 or 1500. And yeah. it doesn't take that much. And it's not that, that expensive for a knife maker or manufacturer to make that, that extra little presentation value. Uh, I, yeah, exactly. And, and it, it shows you care. It shows you care. Then again, yeah. you know, uh, you can also spend all your time on the knife and then be like, you know, uh, tops sends them in plastic bags. And I'm like, I'm fine with that too. Cause what, at the end of the day, I, I don't care much about the box, but it, like you said, it's the experience. And, uh, since we're talking about rough riders and GECs, kind of two opposite ends of the spectrum, I just uh, I have to mention that there are differences, you know, I mean, <laughs> there are differences in quality and fit and finish. Um, you know, you spend a uh, hundred dollars on a knife and, you know, if there aren't differences in fit and finish and quality, then you've been taken. Um, there is, there is, I would, uh, I, I would have to show some minor, you know, minor things, the way the fitment, the way, the way the different bones line up and stuff, uh, the different materials and, line up. And, and which which knife is which? Well, it's hard to say, right? This is the Rough Rider and this is the GEC. And and really, unless you have them in hand, well, not necessarily. You can maybe see little differences here. My, my point is, uh, I don't know what my point is. My point is I love them both, but I, you know, and, and I, and I encourage people to try out as many as they can, you know, with the, with the Rough Riders. But I also encourage people to, to remember that these, the Great Eastern Cutleries and, uh, and some of the cases are really worth the extra money. And it's, it's kind of intent. It's kind of not intangible. It's difficult to um, enumerate why, you know, but it's a quality thing and you can feel it. So kind of hard to know. put into words is what you're saying. It is. I just, I just want to say, you know, Bill Howard and Great Eastern Cutlery uh, who are toiling away in Pennsylvania on hundred year old machines, making these, right. you, you can feel it. There's a soul to these that, that is it, maybe not, it, you know, a different thing with this. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, Bob had a couple of new rough riders in this week. I had some new rough riders in this week. Uh, do you think that's going to be the, the kind of the, maybe the end or the, the slowdown for you for Rough Rider? Uh, well, yeah, for uh, for slip joints in general, I've, I feel like I've, I've kind of crested that that impulse. And uh, so now I'm, I, I have a couple of fixed blades I want to move along because I did commit to a custom fixed blade earlier in the summer that I'm waiting for from um, Black Rock Knives. Check out Black Rock Knives on Instagram. His work is really cool. Ah, I said it again. His work is really accomplished and good looking and menacing. There, a little more articulate. Um, but definitely but, not cool. <laughs> there, well, they are cool too. Uh, so yeah, I, I committed to a monkey thumper. It's a, it's a ringed, you know, before I talked to Ed Calderon, uh, it's a ringed knife um, with a double edged blade. It's cool. <laughs> oh, for, thump, for thumping monkeys. <laughs> yes, for thumping monkeys. And then there are a couple of other things. Uh, I would like to get the Spartan Harzy dagger. I mean, I really would like to get that. So I, I have a feeling I might sell my tops dagger and a couple of other things to fund that. Because okay. right now, I, I think maybe we're a one dagger household. I'm not sure. Hmm, interesting. Well, of course, that's a, a good reason for you to uh, join the Knife Junkies Patreon uh, group, <laughs> knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, because as Bob uh, noted at the beginning of the show, uh, last Thursday's Thursday Night Knives, the, the topic came up about 
why don't you sell some knives, you know, privately to your patrons, maybe do it uh, kind of as a, as a perk of, of, of membership. So Bob talked about at the top of this show that, uh, yeah, he's going to kind of start doing that. So uh, maybe if the uh, tops knife or some of these other things go on the chopping block for Bob, uh, patrons will get uh, early access to, to that. And uh, if they are not scooped up by members of the Patreon group, uh, then maybe you'll have a chance publicly to do it. But you can uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and uh, get in on the uh, the early knife sales as well as the monthly drawings for a knife giveaway and early access and bonus access to content and all that kind of good stuff. All right, Bob, you know, since we have started doing this uh, show on video, which I'm mm -hmm. getting more and more comfortable with, I'm not saying I'm I'm – fully 100% comfortable being on video. But I noticed our time gets longer and longer. We seem to talk more <laughs> and more. <laughs> but there are, a couple of, there are a couple of things we do want to uh, mention before we wrap up. Uh, coming up this Sunday on uh, episode number 154, I believe, of the Knife Junkie podcast, uh, you have a chance to uh, talk with uh, Justin Cotton of Asher Knives. Uh, and I'm going to use the word cool. That was a really cool and uh, fun interview, I think, uh, uh, with Justin. Yeah, yeah, it was a great interview. And Justin is a great guy. And uh, he's like many of us. He's just a man out there with his family, living his life, uh, you know, working his job, who loves knives and decided, I'm going to have start my own knife company. And psh, boom. Uh, and not boom, like it was no effort. I mean, he he outlines and details the effort and expense of doing that. But, um, you know, if not now, when? And right. uh, it, it was uh, it was a very good conversation. And and uh, one of our viewers, uh, tier one, another Justin, was kind enough to send me uh, two Asher knives, folders and a fixed blade to check out. So it was great to have that and have them in hand when we were doing the interview. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely check uh, check that out. Yeah, that'll be coming up this Sunday, October 11th. Uh, the podcast shows normally uh, go live sometime uh, early to mid-afternoon on Sundays. Uh, Patreon members get early access to the interviews on Friday. So uh, patrons, you'll have that coming out in the next couple of days. And then, like I said, uh, going publicly on Sunday sometime early to mid-afternoon. You can find it on the Knife Junkie dot uh, com website as well as on youtube and of course if you're listening via audio uh your favorite podcast player apps uh thursday night knives uh, again hope you'll join us 10 p.m thursday night on the knife junkies youtube channel the knife junkie.com slash youtube uh lately bob you've been going in depth with topic shows and kind of talking, uh, you know, kind of topic things. I thought last uh, week's was uh, kind of interesting. If not knives, what would you collect? Yeah. And I love the uh, folks that would uh, collect whiskey. And I was yeah. thinking, <laughs> does, does that mean you collect it and drink it, which I would be all for, or does that mean you just collect it and put it on a shelf and look at it? Because I, I'm not down with that. <laughs> I think it's both. I think, I think okay. like all, all collections, there are safe queens. I'm sure there's like, oh, psh, I only drink that bourbon when my brother comes over. I only drink that bourbon, you know, on special occasions. Gotcha. All right. Like a Tuesday well, I, night. Okay. Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking any, any day that ends with the words D-A-Y is probably all a good right. day to drink uh I would agree. But anyway, who am I to say? All right. Hey, uh, wrapping it up here on the Knife Junkie podcast, final thought, anything we haven't covered, anything you want to? Oh, God, uh, Jim, I, we've been an hour on this supplemental. I, I, think I've, I, I think I've said everything for this day. But, uh, well, everybody, thanks for watching and keep a cool head. Oh, you had to go with cool, didn't you? you haven't said <laughs> that enough. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, don't be a Bob's word of the day. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to spell it K-E-W-U-L just to be oh. cool when I, when I do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cool uh, in the game. That's right. All right. Hey, everybody, truly do really thank you for joining us here on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 153. For Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife newbie over here, Jim Person. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.